Oh my gosh, can you move your hand? That's so annoying. Goodness, just kidding, guys. That's my hand. <laughs> Welcome back to American Shade. I'm Brittany King, your host. And I am going to be doing a reaction video. I love these things. This video is going to watch just, you know, in my free time. It's a video by The Cut and they interviewed blind people on racism and I immediately clicked on it and it was about 30 seconds in and I was like you know what I'm not going to watch the rest of this I'm just going to do a reaction video and watch it fresh with you guys and I'm going to just react just organically to it the reason why I want to react to this video in particular is because I find it very interesting the idea of them interviewing blind people of all different type of races from all different type of backgrounds different skin complexions and i'm very interested in seeing what they say about race because if you're blind you can't see color and if you can't see color can you really ever be racist and can you really ever experience racism I wonder. I am racist. My name is Jacob Kamaonu and I am a restaurateur. My name is Mike Mellon. I have light perception, so I can tell like the lights are on or the studio lights are on, but I can't like see anything else. I can't see anything, no lights, no color, anything totally dark. I no. I would like to think that I'm not. However, there are the stereotypes that have been instilled in everyone. I am racist because I think every white person is racist. I participate in institutions, like I benefit from capitalism, which was built on slavery and racism. I've experienced um, racism. I don't know how to say this. So with the prior woman before him, the white woman who said, I am racist. I benefit from institution racism. I benefit from uh, the happenings of American slavery. I don't know if it's just me. That sound very like instilled in her. Like someone said, I know you don't know this, but you have white skin and this is what white people did. And you're racist because you have white skin, even though you, when you can't see your skin and you can't see the person that, the skin complexion of someone that you're interacting with to even be racist. Racism, I feel like is completely solely on the superficial notion of looking at someone and assuming something about them. And I'm not trying to be patronizing, but if you are white and blind, how, and you're interacting with someone, unless you go by a stereotype of like someone's voice and that maybe someone's voice in their vernacular and they're like twang, so to speak, sounds black or sounds Hispanic and you treat them differently because of the sound of what you think they look like. Like maybe, but what she said sounds very like someone told her this. That's just me. But I don't let it bother me. I think allowing it to affect me um, gives them the, the upper hand. Are you racist? No. Why? Because I can't see. <laughs> Blindness does sometimes take those racial cues out of society because if I can't tell by someone's voice or accent or whatever, like I have no idea. I've noticed with a lot of people I meet, I don't really find out what their race is until a while after we meet. You know, we don't necessarily go around asking, oh, are you black, are you white, you know? Um, you are who you are as far as I'm concerned. I work with a person who's Japanese, but I would have no idea unless you told me. Like, there's just no, like, cue that I have. I can tell more or less if the person's Caucasian, Black, Mexican, you know, what, whatever it might be. But 
other voice accent? Like seeing someone's skin color, I think is not the only way that we differentiate people's like culture or race. I can pick up dialects and sometimes try to associate them with what race mm. they might be. I wish I could just completely just ignore it, but I can't help it. If I'm walking down the street and I hear a couple of people and they're like aggressively talking to each other and it's slang and vulgar speech and it's not eloquent, I naturally sometimes think, oh, those people might be black because of their, their accent. I shouldn't think like that, but there are natural stereotypes out there in the world. Hmm. No. You could hear the way someone speaks and make a, a determination about them that could be completely inaccurate because you just don't know. I've had experiences where I've known, you know, a person for probably a year, year and a half or so, and um, they never knew I was black. Ironically, this was another another black person. It was like, you're black, mm. you're black. And I was, yeah, yeah, I'm black. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> I believe there's racism within the blind community because there's racism everywhere and the blind community is no exception. I think it's, a, it's their upbringing. How they were raised. I grew up in North Idaho, and I wasn't exposed to a lot of people from different cultures. And I grew up in a home with my, my dad, who was pretty racist in the term I want to use, but pretty vocal about identifying people by their race, like it's just how he grew up. I mm. come from India, and my dad, <clears throat> he's a uh, different complexion, and they got married each other. Mm. And they are like a pretty, you know, happy couple. It's a good example for us, you know. Racism. If I did, I probably didn't recognize it because I don't look for it. The mm. issues I've seen the blind community kind of take on, um, maybe they tend to be more like white issues. One thing I haven't seen the blind community collectively work on is housing justice. And I'm complicit in this too, right? Because I'm a blind person, right? So I could be the person to organize and I'm not. People who are blind mm. come in all shapes, sizes, economic backgrounds, beliefs, and some of them are racist. That's something that we, as a society in general, blindness excluded me to work on being better at. Hmm, that was a really interesting video. I feel like the the blind woman in the blue was like f forcing this like guilt onto herself to feel bad about being white even though she is blind and that in a sense she is colorblind and that she's colorblind by default like there's just not her fault that she can't see color and i feel like she was trying not to say and i'm not blind so i can't say that there is no racism in, within the blind community or with what she was saying i can't say there's no validity with that all i can say is it sounded like she was trying to find justifications to why she was saying she was racist and saying like, well, there's other ways you can be racist and you don't have to necessarily be like, I see race or I see a color to be racist. You can, and I can definitely understand the notion of someone being, just someone discriminating against someone because of how they sound. Like I said that, like before they even went to talk about that notion, I did say like the only way you could know someone's race maybe is their voice or the way they talk. But other than that, it's very hard to, to know. And I don't know, I feel bad. I, mean, I feel bad that, that she, I think that she was trying to find ways to justify how she's racist and complicit, even if she's blind. Like, I don't, I don't think you are actually, that's just me. And I, I think there was something to take away from the black man who said, if he does experience racism, like he doesn't give it power, one. That he had a friend with another black person. I believe he was saying like that friend was blind and they, neither of them knew they were black. Like, you know, not that they knew they were black, but neither of them knew the other one was black. That's, that's, that is something right there. That, that, that's, 
something that's another video. The fact that two black people didn't know the other one was black and I don't know, like something about that's baffling to me. Cause I feel like you would know that person's black because of certain colloquialisms they use, certain phrases, certain backgrounds, experiences. But then again, maybe that's the point. They, they haven't experienced that. Like they don't, I don't want to say fit in, but in a sense fit into a box where they have experienced the color, um, the color experience of racism. I don't know. And this is something to say like about what color blindness would look like or what it would be like if we all were if we all decided that color blindness was the way to go and that it wasn't such a stigmatized term that actually maybe that should be something we decide like that actually might be an avenue in, in combating racism. This video kind of touches at something with that. And I don't have, I kind of wish I watched it before so I can give a better analysis, but there's something there that kind of oddly justifies this idea of colorblindness for our, for our, our society at large. I'm going to sit with that and I'll probably be back with another video. But thank you for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Like, comment, tell me what you think about the video. Tell me what you think about what I've said. Everyone has a right to freedom of speech. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.